you look at Penn State's offense throughout this year, they've done a good job of mixing the run with the pass, and it's, it's balanced offenses that have hurt the Wolverine defense there this year primarily because of their poor pass defense. Today, they've got to be able to put pressure and put Penn State in obvious passing downs. That means they have to stop the Lions from being able to run the football. Wolverine run defense will have to step up, play well. Expect a lot of eight-man fronts with number 41, Tommy Hendricks, coming up. They'll need the same effort today that they had in the second half against Ron Dane in Wisconsin, where they held him to no yards rushing. On paper, Penn State should win this football game and beat Michigan in their final home game. That's why they play the games in college football. Michigan will upset Penn State today in happy battle because the lingering effects and the hangover of last week's disappointing loss to Minnesota. I like Michigan to get it done. A not-so-fast Italian style, my friend. <laughs> Joe Paterno is going to win this football game, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, the defense is going to play great for defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. It's his last home game. He's been there 32 years. And now the, that they've lost, the pressure's off Penn State. They're going to open up their attack like they did against Arizona. I think they score big and a lot. I like Penn State big over Michigan. The big. emotion of big. Jerry Sandusky's right. final game. Yes, not-so-fast Italian and Polish, and AARP <laughs> style as well. Yeah. Only one team has beaten Penn State three straight years. Alabama. Michigan can match that. Go back a little farther. A century ago, Sewanee. Five straight shutouts, and we'll talk more about that Hokie defense. Leak in November was much cooler. We'll throw it deep for Johnson. It's caught! It's caught! And the 12! Penn State's tears washed away three months of joy. Michigan understood Penn State's pain. No team is immune to the shocking upset these days. At the hole, we're going to make 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, oh, five oh, oh, Time to regroup. Good everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. You know, it was just about this exact spot on the field a week ago where Minnesota broke Penn State's heart. And now the question here this afternoon against Michigan is can the Penn State players and, yes, the coaches, recover emotionally. Remember three weeks ago, Michigan lost a very similar game at home against Illinois. The next week out, they struggled against Indiana before blowing Northwestern away last week. The stakes here today are huge. Neither of these teams can reach the BCS championship game in all likelihood, but both are eligible for the Rose Bowl, the Fiesta Bowl, and the Orange Bowl. The loser, though, would seem to be out. So the stakes have never been bigger between Penn State and Michigan. We start the day by sending you to New York City, and here's John Saunders. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. Joined by Nate Anthony Thomas, the A-train. Penn State counters with Courtney Brown. And a linebacker named LeVar Arrington, a Superman in cleats. The stars are out. It's Michigan and Penn State. Looking live at Beaver Stadium on a beautiful November Saturday. It's a Big Ten showdown between Michigan and Penn State. Two schools chasing big prizes. Good afternoon, everybody, with my partner Gary Daniels and I'm Brent Musburger. And Gary, how tough is it going to be for Penn State to recover emotionally? Well, you know, Brent, when you, when you chase big dreams, just you leave yourself vulnerable to big heartache. And, and Penn State is feeling it at least for the whole week. But I think they can get over it. And, and there's really two reasons. It's senior day out here. 21 seniors playing their last game. And secondly, it's Michigan. You can get ready for Michigan no matter how big that heartache is a week ago. But remember this. Michigan comes into this game as an underdog. Lloyd Carr loves this position. Penn State's going to get Michigan's best shot. I think Michigan's going to get Penn State's best shot. And if you don't think Michigan gets ready as an underdog, ask Ohio State a few years back. Gary, not only 21 seniors, but a coach is stepping down. A warm moment. Jerry Sandusky introduced for the last time. 32 years and a final hug from his son, John. We're just about ready in Happy Valley. It's before you were going to talk to him, but he was like a cat on the proverbial hot tin roof. And that certainly gives you an idea with neither team on the field. Uh, just how emotional and gut-wrenching it has been for this coaching staff. You know, youngsters can sometimes recover, but I've always felt that with a loss like they experienced last week that it was going to be tougher for the coaches 
to step back in this. And now Joe Paterno's offense, which was unable to finish off anything in the second half last week against Minnesota, will go to work here with the first series of the game. And here is Hayden Epstein out of Cardiff, California, a sophomore kicker for Michigan, who handles kicking off, kicking field goals, and punting here today. Larry Johnson, number five, and Kenny Watson, 22, are back deep for the Nittany Lions. Lamagne, your Big Ten referee here today. Time to try and forget Minnesota. They'll take a knee and bring it out on the 20. But we asked quarterback Kevin Thompson, how was the loss to the Gophers last week for you personally to take? Sunday was a tough day. Um, it was hard to really catch a grasp on what had happened on Saturday. It was like uh, everything had been um, just flushed right down the tubes. and. Um, you know, it was like everything that you had dreamed about growing up was gone. Kevin Thompson and the Nittany Lions with the first play here against Michigan. Everybody will feel a lot better when they snap this ball the first time at Penn State. Eric McCoo gets the first carry and goes nowhere. Hendricks comes up from the safety spot to bring him down as we meet our Chili's starting lineup for the Nittany Lions who've adjusted that offensive line. Keep an eye on number 51, Eric Cole. They are concerned about the middle of their offensive line, so a change, he moves from guard to center. And the wideouts, Shafi Fields and Eddie Drummond, both capable of going deep. Watch him also on the end around. Then we've seen Kevin Thompson, Mike Ceramelli out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, is the lead fullback as they bring it up now with second down. Ceramelli is offset left. The strength of the formation is behind Stewart to the left. McCoo's second carry, nowhere. Number 56. James Hall trips him up for this Wolverine defense with Williams, Renus, Wilson in that front. Hobson will play today. James Hall already makes his presence felt. Ian Gold will be in the middle of things. And Dahani Jones brings speed. The corner to watch today is Todd Howard. Cato June moves in to start at free safety. Penn State's first third down of this football game. Michigan with three down linemen and motion. Fumble! Michigan recovers at the 21-yard line. The Wolverines near the red zone with Ian Gold pouncing on the loose football. The change to Cole as the center backfires on Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions. It's really been a situation that Penn State has struggled with all year, the center position. They played a true freshman at that position. Cole back there. But remember, Brad, Rob Reynas, good leverage football player in college football, is able to get under Cole, who's six foot five. The ball doesn't get back to Kevin Thompson. Reynas shoves him back into it. Thompson is not able to get the ball. They stem to the left. Brady will throw on a short drop. Wants Terrell out of bounds and in complete. He was covered by David Macklin as we take a look at the Chili's starting lineup. Keep an eye on Jeff Backus and Ben Mast, who will leave right now, and Mo Williams will come in and play right tackle for disciplinary reasons. Mo is not introduced as a starter. David Terrell had the first ball thrown at him out of Richmond, Virginia. He has two high school teammates on the Penn State team. Tom Brady, in my opinion, the most underrated quarterback in the country, pitches to the A train, who battles inside the 20-yard line. But this will set up a third down against a rugged front seven from Penn State. Courtney Brown could be the first player selected by any team in next spring's NFL draft out of Alvin, South Carolina. Three linebackers and not a big weakness amongst Arrington, Short, or Morrison. The DBs will be challenged here today. Macklin and King on the corners. Adam and Fox the safety. They gave up big plays to Minnesota last Saturday. Aaron Shea is the running back behind Brady, who's going to throw it again. Incomplete over Terrell's head. Miscommunication between the wide receiver and the quarterback on that pattern. 
Brent, you can see the game plan emerging, trying to get the ball to David Terrell, and also giving a lot of attention to Courtney Brown, the defensive end. Double teaming right here, two guys on Courtney. Here is Hayden Epstein of Michigan, must account for number 11, LeVar Arrington, on this field goal attempt. 34-yarder. Arrington can't quite get to it again. And Epstein puts Michigan ahead with a field goal. Superman was flying, but he didn't get quite high enough. Goal line, Johnson number five. Penn State's defense, Brent, survived. They, they could not give up a touchdown so early in the game, especially feeling as bad as they did coming into this game. Deep kickoff. Watson will bring it out into the middle. Pounds to the 25-yard line. A week ago, Sports Illustrated captured the moment. Arrington and Courtney Brown flying after the field goal that spelled doom. They couldn't get quite high enough. Yeah, here's a look at it again. Watch what's going to happen. Courtney and LeVar get up. They jump. They sky. They time it well. But the ball actually goes inside of them on that play. A little bit misaligned. And that was the one just moments ago here in Happy Valley. Now Thompson brings him up first and ten. Motion fields. Blitz Jones. Pass. In trouble. Down he goes as Gold gets a hand on his foot. But it was Dehoney Jones who blew the play up. Let's take a look, Brandon, at the Dell Game Solutions. When Penn State has the ball, Penn State needs to be consistent. Run it a little, pass it a little, don't fumble the snap. Wide receivers have to help whatever quarterback's in the game, Thompson or Rashard Casey, get off some press coverage, somebody to throw to. Michigan defense, this is not a great, great Penn State offense. No cheapies, no easy touchdowns, and when Casey comes in the game, keep him in the pocket. I don't care how you do it, rush it, whatever, keep him in the pocket. Second and 15 for the Nittany Lions. Movement. Renus was he pulled across by the offensive line. The flags fly. So the young man with a lot of pressure on him as Eric Cole from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, the senior now, moves to the center spot. 98 season, he played center. Snap. Contact. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Brent, this is not Eric Cole's first game ever at center. He played last year against Michigan State at the center position. Hasn't played this year. Played guard all year. Francis Spano and Joe Iorio, two players. This is the third different center Penn State has used. The hard count gets the five yards back from Thompson. Offensive line holds this time. Complete fields far side. Out of bounds. Close to midfield. First down, Penn State. Very simple call that time for Penn State. They aren't looking for the touchdown. They're just looking to be consistent. Throw the ball out there. One-on-one -on -one covers. Choppy field uh, out there. Todd Howard, look at nice cushion right there. A little bit of a turn by Todd Howard early, and Choppy gets the ball. Big first down so far for Penn State. Sam Grinshaw being pressed in a wide receiver. So McCoo runs to the short side. Bolts across midfield. Fumble! Penn State recovers, I believe, but hold on, the umpire, no, Michigan. Penn State had the ball and fumbled it away again, and now Michigan has recovered two quick turnovers on the Nittany Lions. Paterno has to be just beside himself at how things are turning here in the early going. Eric McCoo has been their game-breaking tailback. Ran for over 100 yards last week against Minnesota, but a great tackle that time right on the football by Cato Jew. New free safety, a playmaker, made the play, put his helmet right on the football. Kareem McKenzie, the tackle, had the ball and let it get away. And now Michigan comes back with its second series. The A train is deep and ready to go to work. Here he comes, right side of the offensive line, just buries his helmet in there. Let's take a look at the Dell Game Solutions for Michigan. First of all, this game, they have to protect Tom Brady. Last year, not one sack by Penn State. 
First, then win a fist fight. What that means is Michigan wants to be physical with this Penn State defense. They think they can set the tone of the game. Penn State has been making too many mental errors on defense. Know the defense, do your assignment. And then when Tom Brady gets into the pocket, Penn State would love to force him wide and make him throw out of the run. Terrell and Knight are off to Brady's left. They trained at a wing spot. Arrington coming on a blitz, and Short gets through. Arrington and Brandon Short gang up the middle, and that allows Brandon Short to bolt free for the sack. You talk about a one-dimensional rushing team. You can see Short right there is going to hit the gap. Arrington draws the blocking. It looks like Michigan was a bit confused by the movement of Penn State's defense. Michigan has said that Penn State runs as many different fronts as they have seen all year. Third down and 14, and Thomas comes out. They go into an obvious passing formation with Marquise Walker, and Michigan will line up in a shotgun. Aaron Shea is the protector. They rush five. Protection holds complete. Corral inside the 45-yard line. First down, Michigan. A huge third down play and fine protection. It's like one of those crash dummies you see on television on this one. Terrell goes out about 16 yards on the crossing route. Right across, falls right on the one. And then number six, James Boyd, puts his helmet right on the number one. That's a tremendous play by David Terrell, their playmaker. French, you can't play defense any better than that if you're a free safety. Drew Henson is coming into the game. And Brady was injured on that play. So Drew Henson steps in as the Wolverine quarterback. Thomas goes over to the left. Jack roots down below. We'll check Brady as quickly as we can. Here comes Deano Johnson's going to throw it on back. Henson all alone on the right side. Probably a planned play. And Henson is out. Was it a faked injury? We shall find out at the 21-yard line. He's pushed out of bounds. There's no doubt about it, Brent. This was part of their script. Tom Brady's running back on the field. Drew Henson, a little better mobile quarterback. The double pass by Diallo Johnson, who was a high school quarterback, back to Henson, produces a big play early in this game. You know, when you got a team that's a little bit down, you're Michigan, you want to put the hammer to them early, get them feeling bad about their situation. It's exactly what Michigan's doing. Here's the toss, and here comes the A-train running to the left side. Gets a beautiful block down at the three-yard line. Steve Hutchinson gets outside for him and makes a crushing block, and you can see how he carries the load. Folks, when your second leading rusher <laughs> is doing it on in the round, you know how one-dimensional you are with a running back named the A-Train. Usually at Michigan, we're so familiar to them having more depth. Now Brent, the A-Train got back on track when the offensive line got healthy. There's no mystery about this. This offensive line is healthy for Michigan. He's running well. And Seymour may have pulled Morrison across the line of scrimmage. Let's check it out right now. I should say Kerpakis, number 37, came right across. He indicated that Seymour, who was lined up as a wing, had pulled him off. Prior to the snap, ball yes, start, indeed. offense, five yards, still first down. Brent, four of the five offensive linemen are back for this Michigan team from a year ago that ran the ball very effectively against Penn State. They only are missing John Jansen, a tackle. Steve Hutchinson, who made that great block on the counter play, was nicked all year. He's the most healthy that he has been all year, and you can see the difference in this offensive line. First down and goal. Here's Thomas. Arrington closing in from behind on him. And uh, Jack Arute, that was a great bit of trickery there. No wonder Coach Carr doesn't want anybody in his practice. <laughs> Brent, that is what makes rivalry so important as this one continues to grow. They took Brady off. He feigned a limp to try and throw a dummy, as they say, to the Penn State defense. As you can see, he's back in there. He's not hurt or affected at all. Faces a second down and goal here, Jack. Here comes Thomas again. There's the pitch. He's going for the end zone, and he's blasted. That is Jew who came up and hit him. The nickelback 
Boaju, number 10, the nickel corner, and he's shaken up on the play, but he prevented Thomas from reaching the end zone with this tackle. Boju comes across. Brandon Shirt was also coming from the backside to give him a little bit of help. I don't know if Jew would have got him completely by himself. Watch Short right here, number 43, come in and help on the tackle with the backside feet, and Jew just cleans him up. Thomas, five carries early for 31 yards. Jew must leave for at least one play. Third down and two, and Penn State must guess whether the Wolverines will go to a pass. When Tooman was their longtime standout tight end, you had to always be careful of him. Here with this Michigan team, Aaron Shea, the fullback, can always slip out and catch a slant pass going in from the two-yard line. Terrell, here's the pitch now to Thomas. Cut back, cuts end zone, touchdown, Michigan. Michigan came into this game believing they could run the football. If they run the football, they know that Tom Brady will not get that pressure throwing the ball. And so far, Penn State has turned it over twice and given Michigan a chance to get off in this football game. Here comes Epstein for the extra point to put Michigan on top by 10 early points. Joe Paterno talking to Sandusky, not happy with the turn of events as turnovers lead to 10 quick Michigan points here. But this play set it up. Brady limps off. Henson comes in, fires to Diallo Johnson, who goes back to Henson, who is down the sideline. And it leads to Michigan's first touchdown. Timeout. His third kickoff for Michigan. Brandon, and, and interestingly, he's done a great job of hanging it. We're going to show you right here into the wind, too. It's really helped with coverage. Clock right down here in the corner of your screen. You can watch why good coverage, the kicker helps. Up in the air, Watson from the 8-yard line. Short of the 25-yard line and down. And let's send you now to John Saunders for the update on Georgia Tech and Joe Hamilton. John? Against Virginia last week. Thompson, still the Nittany Lion quarterback. They have turned it over twice on fumbles here in this game so far. Thompson down 10, fires first down, and it is complete. Eric McCoo slips out of the backfield, and a reminder that ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough, Dell Computer, pioneering direct Internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. Chili's a proud sponsor of ABC College Football and smooth, refreshing Michelob Light. Beer or Michelob? Brent, I really believe Rashard Casey's going to be the wild card in this football game. Casey's going to have to come in the game and open up this Michigan defense. They're just laying right at the pocket for Kevin Thompson right now. Larry Johnson replaces McCoo as the tailback. First call, hit in the backfield, couldn't get any place because big number 94, Eric Wilson, stormed across. Gary Danielson and Jack Arut, I'm Brent Musburger. Welcome to Happy Valley. In case you were late in arriving, the weather is beautiful and it's gloomy as far as Penn State is concerned because of these two turnovers. Early in the first football game, a quarterback center exchange, and then McCoo picks up good yardage, but a big hit right on the football gave Michigan life, and they took advantage of it. Terrell checks in as a corner, lines up on the right side. Howard chases motion. Thompson back again. Renus is battle off. Wobbly incomplete. Fran Gander, the offensive coordinator, with his hands full against this Michigan defense. Fred, Michigan feels confident that they can blitz and rush the quarterback, and Thompson will not get out of the pocket. Rashard Casey's going to have to loosen up this defense for Penn State to be effective. That pigeon. Gallo Johnson. 22. Gallo to the 34-yard line of the Michigan football. 
So the Wolverines, who have dominated Penn State the last two years, lead this one at nothing. Timeout. Nally all week long. The hangover from the Minnesota Miracle. First down and 10. Michigan with a 10-point lead. Thomas cuts into the heart of the defense and picked up three yards on that carry before he is surrounded. Brandon Short, the ringleader of that defense. And Thomas, seven carries, 36 yards. Really have to admire Tom Brady, Brent. You talked to him about uh, getting ready to, for this football game and, and what they had to do early in the football game. And, and Tom Brady has been consistent all year. He only has three interceptions, as you can see right there. Yeah, you know, Gary, I think he's the most underrated quarterback in the country, and that's because he had the duel Drew Henson in the early going. It's toughened him. There's no doubt about that. Walker steps behind him in motion. Thomas, the middle, and the Red Sea opens up for him. And let us find out about Indiana. Let's send you to John Saunders, John. The equation, the Golden Gophers had to be so happy about that huge victory here in Happy Valley. Tough for them to concentrate. Third down and two. And now Thomas goes straight ahead toward the first down. Emotion. Emotion is what separates football from a lot of other games. You can go so far on emotion when you get up for a team or down for a team the coaches all tell you the same thing we had a great week of practice oh we were great everything exactly was nobody knows not buying <laughs> nobody knows anything really you don't know until the game starts coaches you always ask them is your team ready i'll tell you after about a half a football game you know when the matchups are this close you have a team like penn state and michigan where talent is pretty even it usually goes to turnovers mistakes something usually causes the game to tilt Right now, though, Brent, I really believe that Michigan came into this game believing they could beat this Penn State. Michigan came into this game believing they could beat Penn State because they've had success the last two years. 61-8, to eight, the score of the last two years. The one thing that I have noticed, Gary, is the blocking of the Michigan offensive line. Backus, Hutchinson, Brandt, Zeman and Williams doing an outstanding job. Steve Hutchinson on the play that set up that touchdown. I mean, he just blew around that pulling yeah, they're, guard they're, situation. They're finally healthy. And remember, Minnesota kind of showed Michigan a blueprint how to do it. Minnesota, a week ago, ran the ball 52 times against this defense. Play fake A-train. Got three on him. Set the screen. And it was blown up beautifully by Ascari Adams, the free safety. Read it perfectly. Ascari Adams is another one of those hitters in that secondary. He and James Boyd kind of take turns. He's right on the left side of your screen right here. A little bit of a play fake, trying to get Courtney Brown, the sucker in the backfield on the left side, throw the ball up. Courtney made him float the ball a bit. Ascari Adams puts it into second long. If you're Michigan, you have to know where LeVar Arrington and Courtney Brown are when you're pass protecting. There's Courtney, there's LeVar. Needs 16 yards on this second down. Gonna run and get nowhere. In fact, they're gonna lose yards. They're gonna have about second and 17 or 18 coming up right now. That did not fool the no. heart of Sandusky's defensive front. Penn State came into this game. We showed the graphic earlier. Uh, 37 sacks, and they've really been going the last five games. But if you look at those sacks, out of the 37 sacks, 26 of them have come from Courtney Brown, LeVar Arrington, and Justin Kripakis. The two ends and the linebacker. Michigan has to earmark those guys. They're down to 17. Knight says I'm being pressed by Arrington. Points at the linebacker. Brady looks back in that direction, gets good blocking, comes downfield, wants Terrell, overthrew him that time. See, that's one of the things that Tom Brady does, the decisions he makes as a fifth-year quarterback that you don't even notice. That's a good incompletion if you're Michigan. Hey, let's punt the ball. Let's not try to make a first down when nothing's there. Here comes the busy Hayden Epstein, branch back deep. Booms a beautiful punt. What a great all-around kicker he is. And no fair catch signal. No. Did he get too close to him? Penalty flag is flying against Michigan. Did he violate the halo? We'll find out. That was Charles Drake, one of their young running backs downfield. Well, this you can't do it any better than this. 
at least the old way it was done. I mean, now they're giving these guys two yards, a two-yard halo. That is going to be the call at least on this play. But if you're a punt returner, this is what it feels like. You got your eyes up in the air. Can't really tell if it's within two yards, but he closed it very quickly that time. One more look at it. Oh, I don't know. I think that was more. He just so fast, that fooled the official that time. I thought that was good defense. It's not a killer of a penalty for Michigan. It's only a five-yard penalty. A little more killer if you're catching the punts. <laughs> you get killed like that. Penn State with a new quarterback, Rashard Casey. Checks in behind center, his first series. A little more mobile than Kevin. They blitz right away, hand to McCoo. McCoo finds a bit of a crease, and Whitley finally wrestles him down at the 19-yard line. Brad, one more look down in the truck. They said the ball is caught. Looks to me like he's at least two yards away. Kind of a rough call for Michigan on that one. You mentioned to Brent the game plan against Rashard Casey late in the year, maybe since the Indiana game when Casey had that great game, is to blitz him. Michigan follows exactly what they've seen on film. Let's blitz him and let's make him make decisions quick. Fields in motion, now he turns back. Casey looks for him over the middle. Jones after him, he slips free. And now Casey tough on the move. And a penalty flag has been thrown. Incomplete, and there's a penalty flag thrown on the play. You have a game plan, keep him in the pocket. That's easier said than done. You have a great athlete, right, Rashard Casey, right there. You blitz, he sidesteps one guy, and all of a sudden, you're in danger. No foul in the play. No foul in the play. Well, a reminder, we've got prime time football coming your way on ESP. Back in on defense. He'll line up as one of the corners along with Howard. Three and, three and fumble, three and fumble, three and puff. Ooh. There's third down for Casey. Penn State unable to get anything going here today offensively. On the move again. Dangerous, and he'll keep it, but he won't get enough. Well, how are the volunteers of Tennessee doing today? Let's find out from John Saunders. John? Well, Brent, as you know, Tennessee number two in the BCS standings and looking to pile something on against Arkansas, but T. Martin is picked off by David Barrett. He returns it 44 yards for the touchdown. 7 nothing is the early lead there. Brent. We'll look out now. The Razorbacks owe him one after last year when that gift was handed to him as the ball was put down on the carpet. At Pigeon, back to punt it. And Diallo Johnson, deep to return for Michigan. Good punt. Johnson signals fair catch at the 28-yard line, and a penalty flag is down. A penalty flag is down on the 50-yard punt. Very surprised that Michigan came with this corner kind of gunner blitz this time. I don't know if this is going to be a first down or not. It's going to be very close. Coming from this side, coming right across, I think that's the guy that came right across the leg. Oh, boy. Barely, barely touched him. You really can't even say he did, he did a bad job. He runs right by him. That's a good job by the punter. You, absolutely. I don't think he did touch him. I really don't think he touched him. That's no clay pigeon. I, yeah, I think Penn State has to punt again if it's not a first down. They cannot give Michigan the football. Defense, penalty is declined. First down, Michigan. Hey, absolutely. That's a good job by Joe because he would have had to punt anyway, and it was a very good very good punt with no return that time. Joe made the right move. A 50-yard punt. And an Academy Award to boot. <laughs> Brent, one last look. Last time, third and long. Richard Casey, what he's going to do is give you bonus time. In the pocket, leave the pocket. Stop the clock. Now, if you're in the secondary, you have to cover an extra four seconds on the play. 
Michigan was very disciplined and gave Casey nothing but the scramble. Terrell late to come to the offense. Thomas is behind the quarterback. It's an A-train run to the 32-yard line for three yards on the play. Well, a reminder, one of the great traditions of Thanksgiving weekend, the skip. Brady eyes the right with the strength side. Shea is right behind him, a good blocker. And Thomas picks his way and close to a first down. Let us check in with our colleague Jack. Jack, what a wonderful November Saturday here in Happy Valley. Am I oh, friend? absolutely. And this man, Anthony Thomas, has got to be smiling. You know, he missed most of the summer workout program for the Wolverines due to a foot injury and an emergency appendectomy. But during that time, he studied his running style from last year and determined that he was running too high up. So he's lowered his center of gravity this year. And you can see from those statistics, he's done quite well. Averaging better than four yards a carry here against a rugged front seven of the Nittany Lions. Courtney Brown has been very quiet so far. Third down and short. Thomas, first down, Michigan. Penn State is blitzing nearly every play against this Michigan offense. No safety in the middle of the play, of the middle of the field. Jerry Sandusky, I think, is trying to create a big play and change the momentum of this football game with the strength of the Penn State team, the defense. Arrington is certainly one of those fellows who can make the big play. Sometimes tries too hard to make the big play. Brandon Short there in the middle, but it is Courtney Brown who Michigan is doing an outstanding job on. Michigan's going to let the quarter end and to get the win. There was one big play, but it was Michigan creating it as Tom Brady limps to the sideline. Drew Henson dashes out, but it was a planned play. Deano Johnson and the T-formation quarterback is a legal receiver in college football. ABC Sports presentation of college football returns after this message and a word from our ABC staff. And Brady will look past middle dropped it. Uh, that's a tough matchup for those corners. Those Michigan receivers are tough to handle one-on-one -on -one with no safety. When you run the ball effectively, you have to move up the safeties. Penn State is trying to stop the run, and they're putting the game right now in the hands of their corners. Michigan could burn them big time. Best passer of the game has been Diallo Johnson, huh? Brady's <laughs> two of six for 11 yards. Second down and 10. It's the motion this year. Thomas behind Shea. And a crease was created by the fullback. And Thomas carries it to the 46-yard line. Jeff Backus, the leader of this football team, says we have to be physical against these guys. We have to set the tempo of the football game, win the fist fights. You can see him right there driving his man right in the ground. drove into the ground. He drove to the bench. <laughs> Freshman Kennedy leaves. Third down, shotgun look. LeVar Arrington right there at the end of the line of scrimmage. Terrell off to the right. Brady gets great time. Goes to Terrell. Incomplete at midfield. More on the exciting one, Joe Hamilton. And here's the exciting John Saunders, John. I'll try to be exciting, Brent. This ending good wishes to the Iowa defense, too, over that <laughs> right. Heisman battle. And uh, Epstein hangs another punt. Branch. Now, that one was a penalty. Yep. No question. They violate the halo back there at the 10-yard line. Wasn't so sure about the first one, but no doubt about that one. Had five more to it. Branch getting down there so clean, he's got to put the brakes on a little earlier. Good punt by Michigan, but Branch was down there. He should have broke down and made the easy tackle instead of the highlight tackle. So a 43-yard punt with a 16-yard return, and young Charles Drake getting close. Two-yard radius violation on the kicking team. That penalty is declined. First down, Penn State. Yes, yeah, so I put you in double jeopardy. If you're going to violate the halo, you might as well tackle it. Might as well. You can't give him a 16-yard return. Let us take a break. Lloyd Carr and Michigan lead it 10-0. Earns as the Nittany Lion quarterback. So Rashard Casey goes back over to the sideline. 
And Johnson is eaten up, but he battled free. Couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, Joe Paterno says that he handles his quarterbacks by the seat of his pants. And so we asked Rashard Casey, how do you prepare on the sidelines when Kevin goes back into the game? I watch every series he's out there. I watch for if any changes or if they're doing anything we're not expecting. And then when I get in there, at least I know beforehand like what, what to expect. Gary, your thoughts about the two-quarterback system at Penn State? Well, I think that they should define their roles a little better. Neither player is sure of what he's trying to do in a game. Joe just playing it by the seat of his pants. I think it's tough on both of them. Hard count works again. Brings him across, and Kevin Thompson goes down. Loose football is picked up by Penn State. But I believe that the Michigan defensive front jumped again on Kevin's hard, ca hard yeah, count. I, I think you're right, Brent. You know, Rob Renes is, is, is really changing this football game right now. The middle guard center matchup is destroying that run game. We're saying Penn State needs to run the ball better. Rashard Casey needs to look at coverages. I'll tell you right now. Offsides, defense, five-yard penalty, still second down. This was the previous play, Brent. First down play. Watch what the nose tackle for Michigan is doing to the middle of this Penn State offensive line. He's just blowing it up. The pulling guard can't get out. The fullback can't get out. I mean, you've got your middle guard taking three blockers in one play. And Rashard Casey comes right back into the game after watching that play. Second down. He will throw in a foot race. Hobson after him. Throws almost intercepted on the far side. Just chucked it away wildly, if you will. And over there on that side was James Hall. James, James Hall looked like it was right in his hands. Jack, uh, how's the crowd, my friend? Well, Brent, normally if you had 90,000 of your faithful at one place, you'd be excited you'd have the home field advantage. Here today, they will cheer the defense for the Penn State Nittany Lions, but right now, when the Nittany Lions are on offense, it's deathly quiet. In fact, I've been to midget football games with more enthusiasm. Well, you almost feel as if maybe they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Yeah, they are uh, they still haven't recovered. Well, now they're down by 10 points, and Kevin Thompson checks back into the football game for Penn State. So he goes on first and third, and Joe starts to run it like Steve Spurrier does down in Gainesville. Back. Fires, caught, fields, first down. Best pass play of the day, and it goes to the 46-yard line, a gain of 17. You're going to throw the ball against Michigan. You have to throw it in on time, and you have to get the middle of the field. Watch the timing this time. Thompson comes back, slam pass, middle of the field. Throw it on these Michigan linebackers. They're very aggressive in the run game, so you have to make them pay and understand that if you get up there and snip the run game, I'm going to throw the ball over the middle of the field. Johnson, son of one of the Nittany Lion coaches, still in there at tailback. First down and 10. Fields the motion receiver. Think Thompson hit on the release. Almost intercepted. Howard should have caught it. Good. In and out of his hands. He took off before catching the ball. Kevin Thompson took a hit just as he let that ball go, and I don't think this one's a fake. This one, he's down. And Rashard Casey, helmet on, ready to come back in the game. A little bit of a bootleg play this time. Play action pass, and watch this. Just as he lets it go, he gets driven into the ground. Those are the one Hall puts him right in, right under the chin. When you drive the quarterback down, those are the ones you feel. Watch this. Boom. And then he drives him into the ground. The ball was wildly thrown. Should have been intercepted in the last three passes. Michigan should have intercepted two of them. Must leave for at least one play. Casey back into the huddle, facing a second and ten. Have to wonder what Fran Ganter, who has to call the plays, what his mindset must be trying to handle this two-quarterback situation. Renus with that cocked look at the nose. Casey, play fake, steps away from the rush, trying to get an alley. Now drops back. Sandlot football, rolls right, fires, Saramelli the fullback, penalty flag down, and the tackle made at the 46-yard line, but there's yellow on the field. You know what struck me is I just wonder if a Penn State offensive lineman was downfield. 
when you hold the ball that long and you suspect that Casey is going to run the ball, I'm just wondering if one of the offensive linemen was downfield. We're going to have a mini huddle. Officials understand what a big game it is. Both teams still alive for the Rose Bowl. You know, one of the things about Richard Casey, they have preached so much, stay in the pocket and throw it, stay in the pocket and throw it. But there comes a time when he has to rely on his athletic ability, haul out of there, and take off. Forward pass did not cross the line of scrimmage. Therefore, there is no foul. Well, I don't know about that. The ball was not thrown across the line of scrimmage. See, that's exactly what it was. There was a lineman downfield, but in college football, you can have linemen downfield as long as the ball is not completed downfield. I thought that was clearly thrown past the line of scrimmage, but you know, I'm watching three guys at the same time, Brent. So help me out here. What'd you think? I thought it was very close. <laughs> Way to go. Right down the middle. You can Third down. Ann Arbor and in Pappy Valley tomorrow. I'm more concerned with this snap, my friend. Exactly. Casey is up under center. Stewart, the tight end to the left. Play fake Johnson. Nobody open and down he goes on the sack by Victor Hobson, the freshman outside linebacker. So we move to the top of the hour here in a not so happy valley. The Nittany Lions who failed to score a touchdown in the second half against Minnesota in that shocking upset a week ago. Can't score anything here so far against Michigan in the first half. They have fumbled it away twice and that has led to 10 points by the Michigan Wolverines. Both teams with a chance to go to Pasadena. Deano Johnson runs up, fields the punt, down at the 25-yard line. So we'll take a break. 11 minutes and 14 seconds left in the first half. Timeout. And today features Jerry Sandusky in his last home game. Defensive coordinator, 23 years. On the staff, 32 years. Who was the Penn State defensive coordinator before? Sandusky and you qualify I mean you qualify as a Nittany Lion expert if you know the answer to that they've had only two here at this school and of course one of the most popular figures here in Happy Valley is Jerry Sandusky total yards for the game Michigan Tom Brady play fakes a beauty drops it back off to the tight end and he is out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Sean Thompson for 15 yards. When you play against a Penn State defense, you have to be ready to face a guy. Been here a long time, obviously, and everybody who goes against them says, you don't even know what their base defense is. Of course, he's always, you know, being known now and where he's going to go his work in the future is the second mile charity that he's so proud of. He helps an awful lot of youngsters. Toss, A train, looking left. Harrington stands him up on the 36 yard line. We go to New York and John Saunders. Well, Brent, Joe Hamilton is sending a statement to Ron Dane. He goes 12 yards here to Conrad Andrew Jeske for the touchdown. 10 of 11, 213 yards, and three touchdowns and a 28 14 lead. Meanwhile, Illinois. Looking to go to a bowl this year, they have a lead over Ohio State. Thank you. Oh, tough year for the Buckeyes. We'll see them next week in Ann Arbor on that annual Donnie Brook with Michigan. Here's Brady. Gets great protection, and Terrell drops it. That is the second drop ball by a Michigan receiver. Terrell knows he dropped it. One of the best in the country. When you said great time for Tom Brady, the reason he had that time is because Aaron Shea, the H-back, fullback, tight end, kind of do-it-all guy for Michigan that time, took on LeVar Arrington and stoned him. Just completely stoned him. Watch him right here. LeVar's going to come into your picture on the right side of your screen. Watch this. One of the best pass rushers in college football. And Shea keeps his feet moving and just stones LeVar. And this ball should have been a big play for Michigan. Drilled him right between the ones. Stayed up high on Arrington. Third down. Brady. Arrington trying to come again. Steps away from him. Brady now working to the left. Arrington comes back and tries to knock it out of his hand. And it was wise on Brady's part to wrap up the football.
go down with it and Michigan must punt. But I mean, Mr. Arrington was stomping and storming. Number 11's not going to lose them all. There's no way. I mean, when you're matched up against this guy, you better be ready every play. You know, what I really liked about Tom Brady that time is he looked behind him. That's where fumbles come if you're a quarterback. They were coming after that punt that time, and Epstein gets it away, and here is Branch. He gets the halo this time. Comes left, looks return, got an alley. 35, 40, 50, midfield. Branch breaks free. Nittany Lions are back in it. football game against Michigan. Bruce Branch, 185 pound sophomore corner. Brent, I really believe the last two halo penalties against Michigan affected their punt coverage this time. They came down more under control. They didn't attack the punt returner and they paid the price for it. They were just trotting down that time to avoid a penalty. Travis Forney. The crowd finally aligned. Sun breaking through on them. Something to cheer if you're a Penn State fan. Bruce Branch catches this ball with about a 10-yard cushion to make people miss. One crackback block cuts inside and now you're running against fullbacks and centers and punters you're not going to catch this guy he'll make you miss all the time a tremendous play by penn state to get back in the game but sometimes you got to have a little help when you're a defensive coordinator from some of your playmakers time out the valley's happy again Adams from richmond virginia this is bruce branch who has just electrified this crowd his one-time high school teammate david terrell on the Michigan sideline. He dropped a pass, a costly pass, moments ago. Kickoff is fielded by Walter Cross. Back up tailback for Michigan. He's got an alley. Forney to beat. And Forney forces him using the sideline. Out of bounds at the 46. We talked about a big block on that punt return. Eric Sturdivant, number 58, is gonna come into your picture and lay it right there. Watch this. Leaves his feet, actually takes two players on the play, and that's all that Branch needed to turn the corner and make Michigan pay, as you've said, for a drop pass that should have been a first down. A 53-yard return. Now, Brady and Michigan have not been overwhelming this defense. They were ahead by 10, largely because they were able to take advantage of a couple of fumbles. But the Penn State defense has been slowly tightening the noose here. Play fake, Brady's going to put it up on first down. Fires far sideline, Knight goes for it. No, incomplete on the far sideline. A reminder that ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Nortel Networks. We're building the new high-performance internet. And Burger King, have it your way. Brent, since the touchdown by Michigan, the Penn State defense has really gotten comfortable out there. The last three series, six and a punt, three and a punt, and four and a punt. Three straight series, the Penn State defense has kept them in the game. Second down and ten. Tight end to Courtney Brown's side. They try to run past him. They bring him upfield and take advantage of it with the A-train. Great call by the coaches. They let Courtney Brown come free upfield, and then the A-train runs to the 29-yard line. Terrific scheme. Penn State is gambling to stop the running game. When you miss one tackle, there's no secondary help back there. You make one guy miss. I think he made Derek Fox miss this time. And if you're Jerry Sandusky, you're just shaking your head. I put a run defense on. I had the one I wanted. And Michigan executed better than we did. Against Sandusky's D, Thomas 16 carries and 74 yards here in the first half. First down and 10. Brady on a play fake. Beats the pressure. Near side, complete Knight. Knight has got it, and he is out of bounds at the 15-yard line. That's a first down for the Wolverines. 
Well, our Aflac trivia quiz. And, of course, we feature Jerry Sandusky. This is the man who was the Penn State defensive coordinator before Jerry, longtime friend of Joe Paterno, still lives here, Jimmy O'Hara. As a matter of fact, Joe told us he lived with the O'Hara family for 11 years after he became the head coach. And following O'Hara, it was Sandusky. He's been the defensive coordinator for 23 years. First down and 10. No help. And the run back by Cross inside the 15-yard line. So the switch to Walter Cross. And he is hit by Brandon Short, Cross's first carry of this game. That's such a tough matchup for Penn State. Anthony King and David Macklin are very good cover guys. But against these big receivers, Terrell goes 6-3. Marcus Knight goes 6-1. King and Macklin, 5-8. When you put them in bump and run coverage with no help, you're asking for Michigan to throw the ball on the fade. Michigan desperately needs Terrell. Oh, and they jump the gun, so the penalty flags come fly. But David Terrell, who has dropped one, has only one catch. He's matched against one of the better defensive backs in the Big Ten, and that would be Macklin of Penn State, number 27. Take a look at David Macklin. He is a great cover guy because he does some things well despite his size. Uh, second now. Just look at a scouting court on David. He's not big, but he has flawless body position. When he's covering a guy, he knows exactly where to get. And when the ball's in the air, he reacts well to it. He doesn't panic. He's only 5'9", so he has to have perfect body position, and he does. Second usually, down. Usually, Brad. Macklin's got Terrell left side. Brady rolling in that. Arrington's picked off. Fires back. Picked off. Fox has got it. 25. 30. Brady goes to the well in the center of the field. A dangerous spot on a throwback. And Derek Fox, the hero, makes him pay. Give half of this interception to LeVar Arrington. LeVar is Brady out of the pocket. That was the game plan. They believe Brady is going to make mistakes. Watch this. The Adrian Anthony Thomas doesn't get a good block. Kind of puts an elbow up. Here comes LeVar. That forces it. And then here's Fox just baiting the quarterback to come in and pick it off. Leaves the guy open just like a basketball press and says, I dare you to throw it to him. I got it. Kevin Thompson back in at quarterback. Penn State to throw on first. Got it. Fields. And that's a first down for 14 yards. You know, for Michigan, they've been very careful with the football. For them, that's only their ninth turnover of this season. But it could be a huge one here. And only the fourth interception. I mean, I'm sorry, the sixth interception of the year. Fourth by Brady, a couple of them by Drew Henson. Johnson back in at running back. Obviously, they're very impressed with this young running back. Sarah Nelly's the fullback. Here comes Johnson. Two yards, and a reminder, we've got great action coming your way. Next, many of you, of course, are going to see Kansas State, Nebraska, or Iowa, Wisconsin. We'll also be covering Maryland, Florida State, Washington, UCLA. But in the Midwest, you'll see Ron Dane go for the rushing record. Needs 99 yards against a weak Iowa defense. And a lot of folks follow it, think he may get that record before the intermission today. Second down coming up. Nine yards to go for the Nittany Lions. Dropped. So both teams starting to drop the ball. That was John Gilmore, the sophomore. Good read of the blitz that time by Kevin Thompson. He knew he had his tight end on a little bit of a hot throw that time. You bring the blitz inside, dump it to your tight end, you should get a first down out of it. Michigan's run defense has stymied this Penn State offense so far in this football game, forcing Penn State to do different things, and it does not look like they're comfortable throwing the ball yet. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator, has three down linemen. They'll chase the motion man with Howard. Now it is Thompson straight back. Gets his time, fires, incomplete. Whitley with good coverage on Corey Jones. Michigan was very fortunate at that time. A man in motion completely got them discombobulated in the secondary. Very fortunate to get an incomplete pass. Penn State will come back to that play and that formation again. Matt 
Seneca is dropping back to punt this time instead of Pat Pigeon. Here on fourth down. Johnson, the 19 yard line, out to the 26 yard line. So it's a seven yard return on a 37 yard punt. 6.45 to go here, and then we'll be checking in with John and Terry on the Valvoline Halftime 99. So many things are going to unfold here in the next four weeks of college football. You will see all those rankings get jumbled just like they were last year when we went right down to that final conference championship weekend and that's setting up again. Huge one in Blacksburg tonight. Huh? Miami goes in to challenge VTech. How good are the Hokies? You'll get a chance tonight to find out. Boyd tackles Thomas before he can get off the line of scrimmage. Remember, that's James Boyd, the free safety. That's the guy who usually stands about 15 yards away from the quarterback and helps the corners and pass coverage on first down. Penn State is selling out to try to get this Michigan running game under control. You know, Brent, the way Tom Brady has gotten off in his game, I know he's got a couple of them dropped and he has an interception. You just wonder if Michigan was still using the two quarterback position, if he'd still even be in the football game in the second half. I think it's much more comfortable to go the whole game, obviously knowing you're going to play the second half. Second down and 11. Harrington on a blitz. Picked up in the middle, so Brady goes. Oh, incomplete. Battle for the ball deep that time. Boyd was battling Knight back deep, and it is ruled incomplete. You know, both of these. I think they Hold called on now. an interception. They, changed it. they, called they it changed it and called it an interception. It was waved off, and that is big for Rose Bowl hopes for Penn State because if they win their last two games, and that interception will help them, and if they win those last two, if they go in to beat Michigan State, Michigan has to win, and they need help from Iowa here today, and of course, Wisconsin needs Michigan to win here today. James Boyd has got the coverage on the ball. The ball is slightly underthrown. Boyd looks like he has it, comes down. I think that's a good call. Now the ball pops loose. I think that was the correct call. Let's look at it from a different, from behind. He's got it. He comes down. That's an interception. That's an interception and a great play. Boyd stops the run on first down. The interception play late. Outstanding call by the back judge who overruled the field judge and said he had possession as he rolled over. Now Thompson in for the Nittany Lions. He'll throw on first down. And he's got Drummond at the 45-yard line, a 15-yard gain on first down. Michigan has been susceptible all year to passes over the middle of their defense. The Illini burned them for four touchdowns in the fourth quarter, and one big one I know was right over the middle all year. Michigan State did it to them when they had 10 plays of bigger than 20 yards against them in that football game. Michigan again giving up more than 225 yards passing a game. Aaron Harris, it is the one back to block on the blitz. He's got it. Far side, Crenshaw incomplete. Double team, safety coverage over to help Howard that time was Cato June, and it goes incomplete. There's a young man with a great future at Michigan right there. Number two, you're going to be hearing about him. He's a freshman. He's 6'1", 213. Gives him size in that defensive backfield. Playing free safety here today. And Cato June will be remembered by Wolverine fans over the next few years. He's really sparked this defense since he replaced Dwayne Patton in there at the free safety mark. They haven't been able to make as many mistakes. Different player at free safety. Here's the blitz. Second down. No chance for Saramelli. He ran right into the blitz, and Hobson makes the stop. So, Tennessee, remember, they fell behind Arkansas. What's happening there? Let's check in with John Saunders. Well, Brent, also looking for the win and looking to pile on the points, but at this point, just taking the lead. Following a turnover, Jamal Lewis leaps into the end zone. One yard out, and Tennessee has grabbed the lead 10-7. For more, log on to abcsports.com on ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Yeah, John, you mentioned something. In those computer polls, you tend to run up the points. And Tennessee, if they get a crack, 
will add on an extra touchdown. They're in that battle with V Tech. There was movement, and the linesman throws the flag. This time the hard count got his own guys. Penn State, Kevin Thompson uses the hard count. Been successful with it early in the game, but this time got his own one. Part of the snap. Ball start, offense. Five yards, still third down. So the BCS standings right now, and if they played the title game today, Florida State and Tennessee, and of course they don't play it today. So Virginia <laughs> Tech and Florida and Kansas State, Nebraska, and yes, even Penn State and Wisconsin down there at the bottom have a chance. They need a lot of things to happen for things to clear out, and a lot of things will happen. We'll just have to wait and see what they are. 4.32 to go. Huge cushion up here. Huge cushion. 20 yards. Fields cuts back. Thompson against the blitz. Deflected incomplete. Williams and Jones. The defenders on the play. And the Nittany Lions are forced to punt again. Both teams' game plan on defense has been very aggressive. Come after the quarterbacks. And I think they've been doing that, Brent, because neither one of the quarterbacks are very mobile. They can come at them and feel confident they're not going to get beat. I think we're punting by the seat of our hands. Exactly. Chad Kroll is the third. Nittany Lion Hunter, the audition continues. Fair catch at the 15-yard line. You have to wonder if there's an injury. Well, yeah, it has we, to be. We said an Academy Award, right. and maybe it wasn't. Maybe there was a uh, an injury to Pigeon when he went down over there, and uh, Jack Arrude will be checking it. And reminded of that tomorrow on ABC, the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating continues. Dynamic pair of Americans here. Yoko in First down and 10 for the Wolverines. Thomas and Shea in the backfield behind Brady. Here is Shea. Huge hole. Breaks a tackle by Brandon Short. And finally, Arrington comes across to make sure that he is down on the play along with Adams. Michigan coming out. Mike DeBoer, the offensive coordinator, knows that Penn State knows that Anthony Thompson is the only guy that carries the ball. So you put Anthony Thompson in motion you give it to Aaron Shea second down the length of the huddle would indicate that Michigan is going to put it up on this play no a train Beats Derek Fox to the 30-yard line. First down, Michigan into Jackaroo. What's the uh, injury status, my friend? Well, Brent, it could be one that could come into play. David Brent, the starting senator, center for the Michigan Wolverines, has hyperextended his right thumb. Now, they've retaped it. He expects to get back in the game. But, Gary Danerson, you know the relationship that a center has with a quarterback. That could be a real a key thing today when you figure he's been relieved now by Frazier there underneath the ball. First down and 10. At least Frazier's had some experience at center. He'll snap it to Brady. And Shea down at the 31-yard line. So it'll be about second down and nine coming up. Jimmy Kennedy, the freshman, back in that defensive line, makes the tackle number 73. So we got a punter we don't know is hurt. We got a center that might be hurt. And we got a quarterback exchange from the other team that caused a field goal early in the game. You think he heard it taken? <laughs> An injury fell on his thumb. That'd be a typical punt. Second down and nine for the Wolverines. Thomas hit in the backfield by the big man. Number 11, LeVar Arrington. What great closing speed LeVar Arrington, who's out of the Pittsburgh area, possesses. Well, he's a, a sub-4-5-40 guy. He's got the body of to do anything he wants to do. But you know who has been quiet, Brent? It's oh. Courtney Brown. Best job of blocking against Courtney I've seen Courtney in a couple of years. Courtney Brown has been very quiet. Jeff Bacchus has done an outstanding job. Maurice Williams has also done a good job. Here. Courtney is down at right defensive end right now against Bacchus. And again, Brady in trouble, slips away, and caught out of bounds. So that one will be incomplete. 
for Pecos and Morrison closing in on Brady. Well, here he is. Branch, who already this season has returned two punts for touchdowns. He went 90 yards, remember, against Indiana. He represents the seven for Penn State. And let's see how quickly Michigan can cover this one by Epstein. Hang it high. Branches to uh, let it bounce. And Penn State will take over on their own 39-yard line. A Big Ten battle in Pennsylvania as Penn State, after losing a heartbreaker last week to Minnesota, hosting Michigan, the Wolverines have dominated them in each of the last two meetings. Since joining the Big Ten, Michigan and Penn State have broken even in six games. And right now, both teams, Copen Rose Bowl, Fiesta Bowl, Orange Bowl, and who knows, maybe even the Sugar Bowl. Aaron Harris back in as the single running back now for the Nittany Lions. Here comes the blitz, going, picked up, fires under pressure, got fields on the blitz, taken down by Howard, they burn the blitz. They burned the blitz, but I think they might have had the hold to do it. That blitz was timed perfectly by the linebacker that time, and I'm wondering if one of those Penn State guys didn't have to stick out an arm to block them. It's exactly what it's going to be. You time a blitz that well, you almost know that somebody on that offensive line cannot come off their block fast enough to get you. Ten yards, previous spot. Go first down. Coming right up the middle this time. Ian Gold is going to come right there. I think that's the guy that got held on the play. There it is. Gets held. At, absolutely. The right guard that time just pulled him down and made a play. And that's why Thompson got the ball off. First and 20. This is complete to McCoo, the running back. Back almost the original line of scrimmage. And now... Uh, Jack hustling back and forth, and uh, tell us about the Penn State punter pigeon, Jack. Well, Brent, let's remember and preface this with the fact that at Penn State, Joe Paterno likes only to release official word on injuries from the press box. But we went down there and spied over and watched the athletic trainer working on pigeon's left hand, actually up on the knuckle area. They retaped it. It looks as if it shouldn't be an injury that it would affect his kicking. Maybe catching the ball, though. We'll keep an eye because they've used three punters in this game. Second down and 11. Thompson incomplete. Over through Fields that time. He was doubled by Bellamy and Dahani Jones. Number 19 is an interesting defensive story for Michigan. That is young Bellamy, who is a wide receiver, but because injuries have depleted the defensive backcourt, he has been switched over there for a time, and uh, the coaches say he'll be back on the offensive side next season, but we'll see about that. Yeah, Brent, I, I've been talking to the coaches th this week, and they said, you know, he's doing so well, we may just leave him there. Those corners are hard to find. Third down 11, Whitley shows bump and run. Hani Jones comes up into a gap. Thompson fires far side, deflected by Whitley, who did just get a finger on it. Drummond was in an open spot and Whitley knocked the ball away as Kevin Thompson is shaken up at the 29 yard line. Well, we don't have a three knockdown rule, but that's two for Kevin Thompson. The Michigan defense wanted to be physical. That has been the rallying cry all week. Be physical against Penn State. Rashard Casey checking it out. That one was, looks like it caught him right on the chin as he let that ball go. This one looks a little more championship series with uh, Ron Dane going against that Iowa defense. His career rushing statistics and Ricky Williams who established the mark for Texas a year ago on Thanksgiving Friday against Texas A&M. Didn't last long and you got to wonder does Mike Ditka have anybody left to play for Ron Dane? <laughs> I just, just ask you Mike. <laughs> that would be different wouldn't it? <laughs> last play again. Looked like pretty good protection. Steps up to throw the football, and just as he lets it go, you can see it. That's a late hit. That's one right under the chin that in the NFL, at least, you're going to get reviewed. Not, not even a penalty flag call. 
so Kroll, apparently for the time being, has won the job. This is his second punt. Fair catch. As the signal hits him, it's loose. Michigan pounces on it, and uh, a penalty flag yeah. is thrown. Wouldn't have made any difference even if Penn State got the ball. They're going to call the two-yard halo rule. Yellow Johnson calls for the fair catch that he misjudges it and runs up and then even though Boyd backs away from the play they called him two yards I don't know about that one either but you know I can understand the rule though Brand. those punt returners are at the mercy and you can take a guy out when he's just looking up at a football I think it's a good rule added to college football Boyd Carr's team stumbled at East Lansing could not recover. Lost a heartbreaker in Ann Arbor, to Illinois. They have won their two games since, and they're still in the chase for the big prizes this year. But they must win here today against Penn State. First down and ten. The senior quarterback, one of the co-captains, Brady, brings the Wolverines out to the set. Anthony Thomas. A yard and no more as that front wall for the Nittany Lions, one of the best in college football, closes in. Brandon Short, number 43, playing in his final game at home. Brandon Short was probably the most positive person I have ever talked to after a devastating loss. I mean, all his hopes and dreams. Remember, he spurred the, spurred the NFL last year to come back to take a shot at the national championship and to have a game end that way. And watch him walk into our media room and say, Somehow, some way, we're going to get back into it. You just watch. It's going to happen. First, they better get by Michigan. Williams now is matched against Courtney Brown. Brown gets down at left defensive end. Thomas runs into a stone wall over there in Michigan, bringing the final seconds down off the clock here in the first half. And Kevin Thompson, injured, heads toward the Penn State locker room for Joe Paterno who may be forced to use Rashard Casey in the second half. We will find out. Michigan led it 10-0. A punt return made it 10-7. That's where we stand. Let's send you now to New York. John Saunders and Terry Bowden. John. Only six yards in the first half. Unbelievable, Gary Danielson. Brent, they've only run, they've only attempted to run seven times. Same thing in the passing game. Both quarterbacks have been throwing the ball, but nothing deep. You look at Tom Brady. Over 20-yard passes, nothing. Zero, nada, only one attempt. And if you look at Kevin Thompson, he did the same thing. Three attempts long, but didn't get anything for it. Both defenses are blitzing them, trying to get them to throw short. Penn State needs something more than a punt return here to stay in this game. Remember, the stakes are very high. We're ready for the second half kickoff. Michigan will go on the attack first. Brent, I can never remember as long, and I've been doing this for 10 years now, not as long as you, but 10 years, Penn State running the ball only seven times in the first half. Seven attempts. It's incredible. Walter Cross, buried in the end zone, takes a knee, and it'll come out. All right, Jack, you've talked to the coaches about injuries and that. What do they have to say? Well, Brent, let's start with Lloyd Carr. He talked about the letter P. He talked about the punt return, and he also talked about poise. Same thing. He wants his team to remain poised in the second half. For Joe Paterno, also poise was the keynote of his speech during halftime. But also, let's update you on Kevin Thompson. Joe Paterno says he's okay, expects Kevin to play more in this second half. All right, Jack, Anthony Thomas rushing for 85 yards in the first half. Fake toss by Brady. You're going to put it up on first down. No, he's not. Sacked at the 15-yard line, and Courtney Brown makes his appearance felt for the first time today, rolling in on Brady, and that is the second Penn State sack of the game. This was a one-man pattern to the tight end coming across the formation, and LeVar Arrington reads it. And actually, that's why Courtney, the two All-Americans, team up. He comes in and jams the tight end, runs with him, takes his 4-5 speed with him. Brady had nowhere to throw the ball. And on the other side, the second tight end, Thompson, could not handle Courtney Brown that time. He came free, second down and long. Good protection, middle. Terrell snaps his second reception. First down. And David Terrell's biggest play of the game as he goes against David Macklin. It's been there all day. 
Penn State has been challenging Michigan to throw the ball deep. Terrell has been one-on-one -on -one cover. There's nobody back there. One-on-one, -on -one, best player, the game-breaker against Macklin, who got out of position that time. The ball was there. Terrell dropped a key one just before the punt return in the first half, and Terrell is happy. Hey, throw me the ball. They put one-on-one -on -one coverage. I can be a difference maker. 26 yards on that play. Ball at the Michigan 42-yard line. Shea batters the middle of the defense for three yards. Courtney Brown that time. Somebody woke Courtney Brown up at halftime because this time he beat Jeff Backus off the line. Got it right across his head. Watch him beat Backus. Ball is snapped. He's going to crash inside, make the play. Comes across Backus, makes the play on the tackle. Courtney Brown is going to try to be the difference maker in his last game here for Penn State. Courtney Brown, a chance to be the first player drafted next spring. To play in the NFL for 10 years. Four years from now, could be saddling up for a Pro Bowl in Hawaii. That's how good this young man is. Coming again on Brady. Brady slips away from him. Penalty flag is thrown on the play. As Morrison, the linebacker, makes the stop, but there's penalties, and Courtney Brown is flying. Here comes Courtney. It might not take him four years to get in that Pro Bowl, Brent. This guy is a specimen. I think he's the best defensive end I've seen. He's up there with those guys, Bullware and those guys, Wadsworth, that played down in Florida State. Coming off the corner, Jeff Backus handled them last year, but now this guy's got a different motor in the second half, forces Brady out of the pocket, and it's three straight plays by what I think is the best football player in the country, Courtney Brown. Remember Joey Hamilton? He was a high school teammate. We had a chance when we were in Atlanta to ask Joey, what about Courtney Brown? What motivates Courtney Joy? Yeah. Maryland against the top-ranked team in the country. And out west, Washington driving for the Rose Bowl. ABC College Football regional coverage coming up next. Get one of them small little pieces yeah, of Yeah, one of those things that would be... You know, we talked about what player might be missed most in college football this year by their team. I still say it's Joe Germain. <laughs> that guy was big for Ohio State. The toss. Thomas. Out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Right, LeVar Arrington is playing some football. He had 15 tackles last week against Minnesota. This is the 10th of the game for him now. He's lined up in the middle. He's running free, and this is why a lot of people think this type of a game breaker, to me, he's very similar to Lawrence Taylor in the way he can dominate a football game as a linebacker. They've got two Best. great linebackers here, and Brandon Short and Lamar Arrington. Arrington a little more athletic than Brandon. Brandon, the ringleader, calms things down, keeps this defense focused, especially the front seven. Third down shotgun, Arrington wants to come. Picked up by a lineman and incomplete, and they were closing in on it. There is a penalty flag down on the field. Well, LeVar Arrington was in the neutral zone first. I don't know if he got back. He did not. So that'll give him a first down, and let's check in with Jack Arute, speaking of great linebackers, Jack. Well, Brent, I am holding what linebackers would consider their version of the Heisman, about as close as I'd ever get to winning this. But you talked about Brandon Short and LeVar Arrington. Well, this trophy is given out annually by the Downtown Athletic Club of Orlando, Florida. It's called the Butkus Award. There go the 51. It looks like Dick. Now, you're looking at the four finalists for the Butkus Award, and for the first time in the 15 years of this award, there are two players from the same team. The the ultimate winner of this will be announced the first week in December. Brent? Some great players on that list, and there's one of the best. LeVar Arrington, he could be playing his last game here. I think a lot of folks think he'll go to the NFL and sack at the 20-yard line. That is the third sack today, and Justin Kerpakis, the underrated member of that defensive front, had a hand in it, number 37. Underrated, but Michigan has been doing a good job with him all game. He came into this game with seven sacks. That's his eighth. Arrington came into this game with eight sacks, so you can see Kerpakis has been making plays. Lamar Arrington putting him back at the middle linebacker. On the run plays, and outside the linebacker to rush the quarterback on the pass plays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> His fans don't want him jumping the Sunday ball, but he may be a youngster who's ready. They run. They let him come upfield. Thomas to the 25-yard line. Not back to the 
original line of scrimmage. So the defensive battle continues here in Beaver Stadium. A sellout crowd on hand. Michigan, 17, Penn State, 10, before a crowd of 96,000. Folks, when this stadium is expanded, you're looking toward that open map. Hey, it'll be right over here. Right. And this That's attendance the will go up over right 100,000 when they add the upper deck down there. But what happens to Nittany Mountain? You can't see it anymore. You're right. You're going to have no view. Bo Ju right there down for the second time in the game. This time it's his right knee. Well, as far as Michigan is concerned, Anthony Thomas has now hit the century mark here today. That's the third game in a row, isn't it? 26 carries, 100 yards, 12th career 100 yard game very hard working running back and carrying almost the entire load out of that backfield for Michigan and of course near the end of the game we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team and Chevrolet will make a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund at the beginning of this year Chevrolet will also donate two one thousand dollar high school scholarships. Bo Jew was talking to the referee about getting cut downfield when he wasn't in the action that was by a Michigan wide receiver. Third down. Brady can't find an open receiver. Could be a coverage sack. Down he goes at the 25-yard line. That's the fourth sack of the game. And Kirpakis is there again. This time, Penn State only rushed three players. Everybody's going to drop here, and Penn State says, where was this defense last week when Jerry Sandusky said, I'm going to gamble, and the blitz did not work. A missed assignment, and that's what cost Penn State maybe that football game last week. Epstein and Branch waits. Great hunt. And a fair catch at the 33-yard line. Well, the Penn State offense, and they have not had a finishing drive in a long time. Remember, this offense did not score a touchdown in the second half of that terrible loss for Penn State against Minnesota a week ago. And here today, their touchdown has been a punt return. So nothing much doing for the Nittany Lion offense as they continue to have trouble. Thompson stays in. McCoo back in. A fake to him. down Penn State choppy fields 15 yards well, that was a wonderful throw that time by Kevin Thompson because he had a guy right in his face as he let this go and he gunned it out that was a long throw to the outside of the formation and I think that's the best one I've seen Kevin Thompson throw this year watch the pressure come from this size as he lets this ball go and he has to throw it about 40 35 yards out there and he throws it right out of the line perfect look at it Four catches, 66 yards for Fields. Short drop, Thompson guns again, and they go to work on the short side of the field. That is Drummond. Five more yards for Thompson's passing attack here with 2.59 left in the third quarter. Jew trying to stay loose over there on the sideline. Sometimes you can try to establish the running game, and sometimes you got to say, we're not going to run. Let's just try to win this thing. Let's throw it. Sarah Melli, the lone running back behind Thompson. Thompson, and he's got fields again for the first down to the Michigan 37-yard line. And, uh, Gary, I think you've got something there. Yeah, I, I think on this hard contact, hard thing from the quarterback, you're trying to get Renus, who is really wired in here. He's this time it wasn't Renus. It was Eric Wilson that jumped off. Renus is starting to get double-teamed, though, Brent, inside. That's why Rob Renus is not making those plays like early in the game. Someone to the outside is going to have to come up and make a difference now. Renus is doing his job. Two guys are blocking him. Penn State staying in the air, coming down the middle against the safeties. Drummond's got it! Touchdown, Penn State! 38 yards, Drummond beats Whitley. No help in the middle. That means the 
pass. Whitley kind of loses his bearing when the ball's in the air. Look at him turn around, lose his stride. Drummond, the fastest player on Penn State's team, runs right by him to tie this game up with an extra point. For the tie. Deadlock. Remember what Kevin Thompson went through a year ago. He has to feel like the best guy in the stadium. The tying touchdown. Time out. So Kevin Thompson, the senior quarterback, shakes off an injury and leads the Nittany Lions to the tying touchdown. Now Cross to return this kickoff. Remember, he made a bad decision the last time. That bottled up Michigan offensively. They did not recover. We're going to tackle this time. Fumbles, <laughs> they got it, take a knee, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. A reminder, Thanksgiving weekend, Sergio Garcia will compete in his first skins game here on AB. And then go deep. Michigan needs to give Tom Brady some help with a few short passes. Thomas has rushed for 100 yards. LeVar Arrington and his friends are ready. This time, Courtney Brown switches to left defensive end. They continue to flop him back and forth. Thomas in motion out of the Michigan backfield. Shea, the fullback. Nothing doing. Courtney Brown's got the feet. Boyd is up high. Let's find out now about Illinois and Ohio State. John Saunders. Brent, when things are going your way, well, you know how the rest of that goes. Kurt Kittner here looking for Michael Dean. Watch this. Doink. And right into the arms of Josh Whitman. Nine yards on the touchdown pass. Illinois absolutely blowing out Ohio State. For more, log on to abcsports.com on ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. John, nobody here wants to look at a deflected pass. Please <laughs> keep those out of happy man. Second down and ten. Brady in the gun. Offensive line holds. They set the screen to Thomas. Arrington can't get him. Thomas cuts back. 40. First down, Michigan. A great play. But a penalty flag is down after the 24-yard oh, game. Body language says it's against Michigan. The Michigan players are walking back with their head down. There it is. You can always tell. Just look at those guys' body language. Michigan, you could see it written all over them. That somebody grabbed somebody out there. Chris Zeman came out and cleared out LeVar Arrington. I'm wondering if that's who stuck out the arm. Car's eyes. Lloyd wants to know who it was on. Second down and 12. That was a spot foul. That means the holding was downfield. And you know Sandusky will come blitzing now. Second down and 12. The crowd roaring. Tied at 17. You no, know, he's in position. Shea There's to is cover. in the block. That's LeVar. Arrington is outside, tries to come inside, gets picked up in the garbage. Terrell breaks free. 40, 45, across midfield to the 49-yard line. A gain of 33 yards on second down and 12. And LeVar Arrington cut into heavy traffic that time and just could not get free. Surprised he didn't go outside. Watch the position that David Terrell does against David Macklin. This was not a very well-thrown ball, but Terrell goes in and beats Macklin to the ball. He just went for the ball. He didn't reach out. He took his body to the ball and saved a pretty poorly thrown pass by Brady that time. Terrell comes to the sideline, having just caught his fourth pass, 105 yards today. He won't be on that sideline long. First down. scrimmage nowhere to go as Arrington met him and Arrington is shaken up on the play LeVar Arrington runs this isolation play as if he was going to get the ball he just meets Anthony Thomas in the hole 
And as you say, he was shaken up on the play. That was a huge collision. So LeVar Arrington, one of the brightest stars in the game. Isolation play. Lamar goes to his left. He's quick enough to come back. Look at that footwork. Keeps his feet wide and takes on Anthony Thomas right in the hole. Thomas gets the ball. I got an opening. Uh-oh. Number 11. And the way Anthony Thomas ducked his head, you would think the injury would have gone the other direction. Now the young man from Pittsburgh won't be out long. Three seconds left in the third quarter. Eleven tackles. That's the end of the third quarter. Two touchdowns. Brady, Knight, Wolverines. Nittany Lions answer. Thompson, Drummond. Back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Driven by his father on the field now. After being shaken up as we start the fourth quarter, the payoff quarter, Michigan and Penn State are tied. Brady sets the screen. Thomas bobbles and juggles and fumbles an incompleted pass. You know, Arrington grew up over in Pittsburgh, and we asked LeVar, how did growing up in Pittsburgh affect your style of play? Pittsburgh, it's like it's a defensive town, I guess. You know, we all love defense for some reason. And I just grew up on that. I grew up on hard nose, leave it all on the field, play with your heart type of defense. He does leave it all on the field, Gary. And, and, he, and he brings the package. I mean, a lot of guys have a lot of desire, but when you put it together with that package, you have a special football player. Third down and 10. Michigan must account for number 11. Murphy no Brown is at left defensive end. He gets picked up. Now Brady steps away, and Arrington's got him. Oh, my goodness. Tom Brady, welcome to what it feels like to be in the NFL. You hesitate for a half a second, and LeVar Arrington closes the gap. He came from about eight yards away. Brady comes up in the pocket, double-teaming Courtney. Nobody open, good coverage. Now watch LeVar come from the right side of the screen. He is a blur. Branch driven inside the 20 by Epstein. Got it at the 16, and he'll be out of bounds at the 22. Let's go back to LeVar Arrington. Yeah, you hit somebody this hard. Watch this blur. He's coming in, and Brady catches it right underneath the chin. So we'll take a break. We're tied at 17. It's the third pass. Go deep on the fourth pass for the touchdown. Brilliantly called by Fran Ganner and Brent. I think maybe the two-quarterback system here might be dead also, don't you think? I would say. Richard <laughs> Casey watching from the sideline. Kevin Thompson. Fires complete, and just like that, another drive is ignited. John Gilmore. The weakness of this Michigan defense this year has been versus the pass. Penn State would love, they'd like to play Penn State football and run the ball and batter you and make you pay in the fourth period. But against this matchup, Kevin Thompson is going to have to throw the ball to win today. Second half, you can see it. Jimmy Herman, defensive coordinator, is going to have to find something against that passing game. First down Love on that. the play. And Johnson is stuffed by the Michigan D. Rob Reynas down on the bottom of that pile, along with Williams. Reynas is playing the whale of a football game. Down to that nose, one-time wrestler, one of the co-captains here on this team. Gets low on the center, creates havoc. Really tough matchup for Eric Cole because Eric Cole is a six-foot-five, more of a tackle body than a center body. Fires, got it. Again, the tight end Gilmore. First down at the 41-yard line. 25 more yards. Yeah, add 15 to it because you're going to get a roughing the passer onto it. So it's going to be a 40-yard game. Kevin Thompson booed a year ago. 
question. Pushed by Richard Casey, the All-American scrambler. And in his last game here at Penn State Stadium, is taking over the football game with his arm. Throwing it down the middle of that Michigan defense that has been susceptible to the pass. Gets hit after he lets it go. I said earlier they should have called it. And that is one that they should have called again. And it was called. Rob Renas, big impact early. Now two guys are on him. Where's the rest of the Michigan defense? Renas can't do the whole thing. Giving Penn State excellent field position at the Michigan 26-yard line. Sarah Melli will be the lone running back behind Thompson, who is lighting up the sky now with the pass. And for the game, he's 13 of 22 for 171 yards, one touchdown. That's the tying score moments ago. Now driving the Nittany Lions again. Look at that, 90 yards in total. Thompson back, right side. Got Fields, and Fields out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Jack Aroot, what's the mood around the two benches, my friend? Well, Brent, let's talk about Penn State. We covered the emotional pit that they were in at the top of the game. You saw how uptight Joe Pa was when I tried to interview him. It's changed. When he came out at halftime, he had that quiet confidence back. You look at the team here, they're all up walking around. The most important thing is the crowd is right back in this thing. This crowd has become the 12th man. Yeah, you know, Blanche may have saved this team with that punt return. He lifted this crowd emotionally. There's a whistle before the snap. Branch's punt return lifted this entire crowd for Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions here today. He did early, Brent, but Michigan got back in the game and took control. I think it was the punt that went inside the five-yard line that really changed the momentum of this game for to get Penn Part State's of the snap. defense back All in the game. Start. Offense. Five yards. Still second down. Could you believe that Penn State in the football game, rushing 17 times for 14 yards. Incredible statistic as Terrell checks back in at corner. He'll take fields, bottom of your screen. Thompson, Freisinger on him and he had to throw quickly. He had no chance to get that ball off because Jake Freisinger. John Sanders, what about Tennessee? Well, Brent, a couple of the SEC's powers aren't exactly on fire today. Well, Travis Henry here goes 28 yards for the touchdown as Tennessee builds a larger lead against Arkansas up to 10 points. Meanwhile, Florida and South Carolina, Florida still leads it, but it's just 10 to 3. Brent, back to you. All right, John, and here Thompson had a hot hand. He hit eight in a row before that last incompletion. And Weisinger forced him to throw in a hurry. There was no block on number 99. So third down, short drop, waits for someone to break free. Comes back, got fields. Terrell makes the stop, but it's first down. First down for the Nittany Lions at the 11-yard line. Penn State did not believe David Terrell was a good defensive back. They were going to go right at him. Does not turn his hips well for a defensive back. Shopping Fields gets inside of a poor technique by a wide receiver that shouldn't be out there. But watch the protection and time that Kevin Thompson has. Renus is blocked, moving his feet, moving his feet, moving his feet, and makes the throw. Great protection by the Penn State offensive line. You tell David Terrell is not Deion Sanders. I want Thompson back. Here's the line. End zone incomplete. He's not even close. <laughs> You think maybe I was kidding? Yeah, I know. Okay. I don't. <laughs> so you understand. <laughs> Second can... down now in 10 yards. David Terrell does a decent job in zone coverage, but in man coverage, it's going to be very difficult for him to match up against a good quality wide receiver. Bryant Johnson checks in offensively. Eric McCoo, the running back. Second down. McCoo down at the 11-yard line, the line of scrimmage. The run defense Ian Gold. picking it up now as Ian Gold was in on it, along with Wilson. Ian Gold, like a flash, comes in there. Great high school running back, playing linebacker, senior. 
chance to get to the Rose Bowl. New life with Penn State losing a week ago to Minnesota. And these two teams have been playing with a lot of pride. Both of these schools know that they have to beat each other to take the next step. Terrell is back. He'll take Drummond as a defensive back. Thompson looks in that direction. Fires and David Terrell that time did make like Deion Sanders. Terrific play by Terrell. Not very good coordination that time. Drummond beats him early. Watch this. He's going to beat him on the slant. Ball should be coming right now. There's the ball. Should be out here. Wait too long on the play, and Terrell can come inside and cut inside of it. Field goal time. Travis Forney hopes to put Penn State ahead for the first time here today. It's a 28 yarder. And the Nittany Lions go ahead for the first time. It's 2017, less than 12 to go in regulation. Timeout. Home team ahead for the first time. Michigan trying to mount a drive against a sensational front seven. Brady snaps to the middle, and he's got Thompson to tight end. Out to the 30 for a first down, Michigan. So Tom Brady, 11 of 25 on the day for more than 185 yards, trying to drive Michigan back down the field here in the fourth quarter with Jack Aroot, Gary Danielson, I'm Brent Musburger. Next week, Michigan goes to Ann Arbor to play a reeling Ohio State Buckeye team. Hard to believe that they have fallen on such hard times in Columbus. Thomas. Two yards. John Saunders, how about that Arkansas-Tennessee battle down south? Well, Brent, remember last year, Clint Sterner with the fumble cost Arkansas the game against Tennessee? He's leading them back today. 53 yards to Boo Williams, who takes it in stride and then fights his way across the end line. And 24-21, Tennessee's lead is precarious. Brent. John, can you hear him cheering from Virginia Tech? Hey, it's you hear a little noise down there? They get ready for that big one against Miami. Walter Cross in that running back. Brady in trouble and going down. Kirpikis, that is the sixth sack of the game for Penn State. You know, you worry so much about the Browns and the Arringtons and the Shorts. You forget about fellas like Kirpikis, and when they come clean, they are sure tacklers. You know, in this football game, we've seen LeVar get inside. We've seen him blitz. We've seen him stop the run. Now we're going to watch him cover a wide receiver downfield. <laughs> Put an S on that guy. He's all over. He had help deep. But that's what you can do when you have that type of a linebacker. He's out there again. He's over the slot, this time inside in zone coverage. Third down. Brady fires, intercepted by Jew. 40 on line, 35. Bo Jew with a huge pick. The nickelback just hold it back 46 yards to give Penn State a cushion. Brent, Tom Brady depended on his receiver to run a good route. Marquise Walker, number four, ran kind of a circle route, and he paid the price for it. Bo Ju caught him, cut inside of him, and gets seven points for Penn State. The extra point is good. And pressure. Watch what happens on this route. You're the quarterback. You're going to throw the ball. Here it is right down here. He's going to come in and try to run a square in. When the ball is thrown, you're depending on that receiver to cut in straight. 
If he cuts in right along this line, this ball will never be intercepted. Watch how he goes upfield and allows the defender to come inside. Look at that. A rounded off pass route, cost the quarterback an interception on the play. Undisciplined pass routes can cost you. Watch the end of this run. An interception named Desire. And it's a 10-point lead. Timeout. Paterno, wouldn't you go to Sandusky and say, how about changing your mind? That's right. How about staying? I mean, I kind of like what this defense is doing here this afternoon, Jared, to tell you the truth. And especially in the second half as they've just pounded Michigan. Got caught on that one long post pattern, but besides that, they have shut down the running game for Michigan. And they've changed return men. It will be Drake, the freshman. Now he'll try to come out. And he is short of the 20-yard line. So Tom Brady faces an uphill battle now, trailing by 10 points, nine and a half minutes to go in regulation. You almost have to start thinking semi-hurry up. You don't want to hurry, but you just don't want to linger in the huddle anymore. Get up, call plays, and understand you need two scores to tie the football game. What's going through that guy's mind? Football player here, assistant coach, coordinator. I'll tell you what's going through his mind. Get some more heat on Brady. He's got Brown well off to the right, trying to get space in his rush. He's got a defensive back blitz. Shea is buried at the 20-yard line on the pass play. John Saunders, how about the uh, Florida Gators and Jesse Palmer at quarterback today? Well, Brent, uh, they're struggling again. Graham takes the pitch this time and takes it across for the touchdown. But Florida last week against Vanderbilt had a tough time. And again this week against South Carolina, a team that has yet to win a game this season. Brent, back to you. All right, so the Gators run out. They got that big one coming up. Brent, Penn State has been in a nickel defense on first and now second down. They're playing the pass. Incomplete. Walker covered by Boju, who just intercepted that pass and ran it in from 49 yards out. Three-man front, three tough linebackers in the game. And you can go three-man front when you have a Courtney Brown because two guys are going to be blocking him every play. and chip incomplete penalty flag comes flying however hell Arrington got his arm in Brady's arm that time that's why it just fluttered out but it was thrown in the backfield and the field judge now coming up to the referee I, I wonder if there's too many men on the field no Brandon Short was uh, probably pushing in the left watch LeVar coming right off the corner he'll hit Brady's arm just as the ball lets go Shea gets him late but he lays out see that Brady could not follow through, and the ball just fluttered. But it's going to be a first down. Because of the penalty against the Nittany Lions, the ball is taken out to the Michigan 29-yard line, and it'll be first down, so a break for the Wolverines here. Penn State still in their nickel defense, three-man front. The A-train runs against the nickel. And that is something that usually is successful against the nickel. Nine more yards for Thomas. So tomorrow on ABC, the ISU Grand Prix of figure skating continues. The dynamic pair of Americans and one for the Wolverines. Knight brings the play in from Lloyd Carr's sideline. Backus matched against Courtney Brown. Michigan's going to have to take a timeout. Which they will do. Time was running down. Rather than take a critical five-yard penalty, they'll call timeout. We'll take a break. Then he came right back, and it didn't make a bit of difference as the Nittany Lion defense 
was ready. Well, it was an interesting decision by Tom Brady to save a timeout and give up five yards, figuring second and short, you're throwing the ball now. Let's try to pick up the first down and save a timeout. Down 10 points. I would have to give him the benefit of the doubt, but now with seven minutes to go, I think Michigan needs to go hurry up, Brent. I really do. Well, why were they taking so much time to begin with? Well, the play did not come in well, and it was a lot of confusion in the huddle. Third down and seven. Brady got Terrell right at the first down marker. Right, right at it. Very interesting decision. I think Michigan probably will have to go for it if it's short, but they're singling first down. Just enough. Come on, Michigan. Gotta get out of the huddle. Come on, Michigan. You gotta get out of the huddle and you gotta get up to the line of scrimmage and make plays. The most positive Gary Daniels has been about the Wolverines, well, since he turned them down and went to Purdue. <laughs> <laughs> no, nope. I'm always just thinking of Bo Schembechler would have made you an All-American. <laughs> You're right. First down and ten. More confusion from Michigan. Players coming on the field late. That's going to be a penalty. 12 men in the huddle. There's the flag. No time to really take a lot of time in the huddle right now for Michigan. They need two scores. Substitution on the offense. Still first down. Right now, if you're Jerry Sandusky, you're thinking, let's run our assignments. He said, if I can be critical of this defensive at all, We've had a little bit of a highlight mentality, and we have not been doing the things we should be doing within the assignments of the call defense. Jerry says, if I call the defense, do what I say, do your assignments, we'll be okay. I remember in each of the last two years, Michigan has whipped Penn State. But here today, the Nittany Lions lead it by 10. First down and 10. Brady steps past Arrington, forced to run. First down, he got the spot at midfield. Big play, a 15-yard run for Tom Brady. He bails the Wolverines out. First and 15, and, and, and give up that type of a play for Penn State. Still, clock is running. Stop it for the first down, and it'll start up again. Michigan, get in and out of the huddle. Penn State, run your defense. No cheapies right now. Don't give them anything big. Need a quick score. Thomas out as a wide out. Brady. Got an open Terrell. Another first down. Clock stops. At the 31-yard line, David Terrell from Tom Brady. 20 more yards. And the Wolverines driving. And a time for mid stay tuned for the Thrifty Carvino postgame report. Will really come in big at the end of the football game. I think that was a real heady play by a fifth-year senior quarterback. Split backs. Pumping. Gonna go down to the end zone. Incomplete. Macklin coverage too tough. Interference is gonna be called on Macklin. It will not be first and goal. 15 yards and an automatic first down. Joe Paterno looking on from that sideline. A slant and go to the outside. Marcus Knight is the guy. Ball's in the air. Just a little bit of his hands on the receiver. Takes it up. I don't even know if it was catchable, to tell you the truth. That was a shaky call. to go. Michigan in field goal range now. But with first down for the 15, they're thinking get the touchdown first if we can. Terrell will go to the short or right side of the formation. He's limping very badly too, Brent. Thomas, the running back. Brady. Deflected incomplete. Second down. David Terrell has been limping ever since that catch to the sideline. Brady tried to come to him, but watch the route is not effective because David cannot really get out and use his wheels. You can see it, he almost 
stumbled on the play. Once the ball is deflected, remember, the defensive back can maintain contact. Thomas stuffed. A beautiful tackle by James Boyd, the free safety, the junior who has made several key tackles on sweeps. Sandusky signals that defense, wants him to hold it right there. They'll be very happy to have Michigan settle for just a field goal, but then can Joe Paterno's offense eat some time off the clock? David Terrell limping worse. You have to assume the pass is going to go to this side because of bad injury to David. Pump fake. Now got a man, Marquise Walker, first down and goal from the two-yard line for the Wolverines. And now they're in territory where the H-Rain, Anthony Thomas, can run it in. Marquise Walker, it's a delay to the outside. This guy's going to go outside, delay, delay, and then cut across as the corner leaves the play. It's called the smash route. Everybody has it. Michigan does it very well. Up quickly. Coleman in that backfield. Here's the toss to the eighth rank. Can he get the angle? Cannot. And Macklin, who committed that costly penalty, comes up from his corner position, smells the play, and makes the stop at the five-yard line, second down and goal. Gary, will Michigan now put it back in the air? They have to put it in the air. Because they, they'd like to run the ball, but because of only 3.50 to go in the game, I think they're going to have to throw the ball three times, maybe. Well, two times, and then kick the field goal on fourth down. David Terrell is out of the game. Walker's in the slot. Thomas is out to the right. Shea stays in to block. Nobody's got the tight end. Brady. Corner blitz, middles open, reaches for the touchdown, Michigan, and Brady's legs save the day. On third and 15, he runs 15 yards, then running right up the middle, he extends into the end zone as they leave him uncovered, and it's a five-yard touchdown for Tom Brady, the senior from San Mateo, California. Well, nobody thought Tom Brady was going to hurt this defense, but when you spread out to cover the receivers, Brady, who's doing just like Kevin Thompson, doing whatever he has to do to lead his team into the end zone. And Epstein pulls him to within field goal range. Can Michigan get the ball back in time? Down three, 326 to go. It was Tom Brady with the middle opening up. Watch the extension across the plane for six. Timeout. Six, they at least thought about the onside kick, but there's enough time also to stop this Penn State offense, get the ball back the way Brady's moving it. Joe Paterno's offense needs a couple of first downs. And interestingly, Penn State is not in a onside kick safe deep uh, uh, return team here. They're back ready to return the ball. Now, if I'm Penn State, I'm going to discourage the onside kick by moving everybody up. David Terrell trying to get rid of that ankle injury on the bike. Penn State's just in their normal return. Look at this. I'd be moving my guys up it, on this play. Except for men like Branch up in the first line. Yeah, but they do have some good hands people up front right now. Just in case. And over here, only one guy outside the hash. One player outside the hash for Penn State. Looks like Michigan's going to kick it long. high, Watson. He'll take a knee. He'll come out on the 20-yard line. So we got more action coming your way. Next here on ABC, great regional action. Unbeaten Kansas State. Ball first down and 10. And you know what Paterno and the Nittany Lions want here. First down. 18 runs for 14 yards coming into this drive. Play fake, going to throw on first down. Second down and 10 as a result of that call. Plus, it stops the clock. How about David Terrell's injury, Jack Root? Well, Brent, it's not an ankle. It turns out that what the problem is with David Terrell as he continues to work on the bike is a bruised thigh muscle. So the athletic trainers have worked on him, but there is some question as to whether David will go back out should they go on offense. David wants to, but 
Well, the jury's still out. We'll have to wait and see. Second down and 10. So uh, perhaps an unusual call. Then again, they haven't been able to run the ball all day. And Maku is thrown for a loss as Michigan's defense now puts them in third down and 13. Third down. Michigan will use a timeout now, and remember, one was saved by Brady that time when he took the five-yard penalty, and as uh, Jerry told you, in his opinion, was very smart. It looks like a genius move right now, but we'll see how it unfolds. Timeout. Kevin Thompson, the senior quarterback. Under pressure, Gold was coming, launches one. Drummond and Whitley are battling for the ball. The ball was badly underthrown that time to Drummond, but nice coverage by Whitley. And more importantly, he did not panic and try to yank Drummond down because he was beat early. When you're a corner now, you're out of phase. you got to look at his arms. When his arms go up, you either look for the ball, exactly the technique. The ball was underthrown. Drummond gets away with it. Brady is going to get the ball. And there will be enormous pressure on this Penn State defense. Johnson, low, returnable from the 41. Middle of the field, and an alley opens up for Johnson to the 35-yard line. A 24-yard return for Diallo Johnson, and the Wolverines may be in business. You're Tom Brady right now. You have to know what's going on. You're the quarterback walking out on the field. the stretch and see how Michigan has turned it over three times. They've had 12 tackles for losses. First down, Brady, fake, throw it, incomplete second down. And so, ask Tom Brady, what are your thoughts when you're trailing late in the fourth quarter? Here's what he said. I think the one thing that you have to, to be aware of is the situation that you're in. Uh, whether you need three points or seven points, how many timeouts you have, um, where you are on the field. Um, if you know those situations, and we, we go through those in practice a lot, uh, you're able to execute. So here he is with a second down and ten. The ball is on the 35-yard line, trailing by three points. He knows that a field goal could put them into overtime. Can't risk a sack or a turnover. Fires incomplete. Terrell being well covered that time by Jew, the young man from Penn State, who made that interception for a touchdown earlier this half. And now, third down and ten, and you wonder how many yards Lloyd wants for Epstein to get into field goal range as he checks on the side. What kind of a pattern do we need? How many more yards? Well, it'd be 52 yards now. That, that's a lot to ask, especially the way LeVar leaps. He'll get up there and block the 52 yard. They got to get way closer. The win would be at Epstein's back. The crowd is on its feet. Plenty of time. No pressure. Wide open. The tight end. First down for Michigan. And Marcus Knight. So it was Marcus Knight, one of the wideouts, for 17 yards. And how wide open can you be in this situation? And what happens is Michigan runs their bread and butter. They cross right over the middle, right at the umpire. Marcus Knight comes across, but you know what was the key? Three-man rush, good protection. Here comes Knight, bit of a pick play, and then turns up. Look how long Brady had to throw that football. Penn State, no pressure, almost conceded the first down. Now they are in field goal range. The toss, Thomas. Thomas, close to the 10-yard line. Clock continues to run. He was down at the 11. So a reminder that just as soon as we finish, we'll send you along to your other games. I know those of you on the West Coast are just joining us because you did not have that game. Gary Danielson and Jack Arud, I'm Brett Musburger. Penn State leading Michigan by three. Wolverines with one timeout are driving here, coming down toward 205 left. And the field goal kicker, Epstein, awaits if they need him. But Michigan chewing up 
large chunks here against this Penn State defense. And Brady gets terrific. Throws it, and a touchdown, Knight again. Marcus Knight. They won't need the field goal kicker. An 11-yard touchdown pass as Tom Brady leads the Wolverines back. Circled them before the play. Tom Brady had to see it the same way I did. A strong safety matched up against a wide receiver. He's already beat him once. This time, man-to-man -man coverage to the outside. You run the flag route. Fox is simply not capable of covering Knight on that route. Epstein for the extra point. Night. Five catches for 79 yards, two of them on this drive, and two touchdowns today. Eric Fox, more of a safety than a corner, put in a very tough position by the defensive call to cover a wide receiver. A perfect throw on the play. Tom Brady leads him back. He knew he needed three. He got him seven. 146. Penn State with all three of its timeouts remaining. And Marcus Knight makes the big play against Joe Paterno's team, which lost a heartbreaker last week to Minnesota on the last play. Well, we've got a time. Let's announce the Chevrolet players of this game. No surprise, LeVar Arrington, the great linebacker from Penn State. Tom Brady, who's led Michigan back in a recognition of this effort. Chevrolet makes a $1,000 contribution to each university general scholarship fund. Beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate $1,000 to two high schools. So congratulations to LeVar Arrington and Tom Brady as the Nittany Lions now need a return. That's two straight weeks. Penn State's defense, the defense that had him ranked number one preseason, number two all year, has not been able to stop a team from putting points on the board when they needed one more stop to win the football game. What a great throw by Tom Brady. Watson. They come out on the 20-yard line at 146, and it was a miracle pass by Minnesota, which led to Joe Paterno's first defeat ever on the last play of the game, the field goal. This was the play, the miracle deflection, and the rest is history. On fourth down, the Golden Gophers shock Penn State. And now today, Tom Brady puts Michigan in position for a comeback victory, hitting Marcus Knight. And now, Kevin Thompson, he had a big play against Fields, near side, incomplete, on that far sideline, and Howard defending Fields, Fields the hero against Miami earlier this year, second down and 10. Be very surprised, though, if the Michigan defense gives Shafi Fields one-on-one -on -one coverage to allow one throw, one fade, to put seven points on the board. You can see how Thompson is thrown 16 or 30, better than 100, but he'll need something here now. 140 to go. The Nittany Lions, 80 yards away. Thompson, time, fires, complete, Drummond spins, first down, clock stops. Michigan went with a three-man rush that time, Brent. 19 more yards. And remember the score, 31-27. Penn State must go the distance. This is a four-point football game after the touchdown pass. Thompson coming back now, far side, incomplete. His receiver, Eric McCoo, didn't keep going. Didn't keep going down the sideline. And when Thompson fired over there, he expected to see a dark blue jersey, and McCoo simply quit on the pattern. Now the play comes in. Frank Gander sends it back in. Kevin Thompson has looked at a three-man rush the last two plays. No pressure on him. Let's see if Ma Jimmy Herman sticks with the three-man rush. 126. Thompson. Oh, 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 
Jackson finds got Drummond and overthrew him. Had him in a soft spot. Right in here. That's where they have to throw the ball. Thompson. They come underneath, short of the first down, but the clock has stopped as Corey Jones is out of bounds. But they'll need three yards here on fourth down. It looks like Joe Paterno is going to let Fran Ganner call this one. He has not walked over. Fran's got the two-minute drill. He said to us in the past that Kevin Tout is the guy he ain't want running the two-minute drill. First down marker is close to midfield. Thompson got time. Got his man wide open. It's Drummond. First down. Clock is stopped inside the 35-yard line. Nittany Lions are alive on that 20-yard gain with 108 to go. Drummond was not open right away, but Kevin Thompson showed great patience. He looked to his left, he looked at the back, and then he came back to Drummond. Thompson, high, deflected, incomplete. Second down and 10, pass deflected by James Whitley. Still a minute to go in the game. Plenty of time if you're a quarterback. Still have all three timeouts. You can throw the ball short. You don't have to pick up first downs. Brian Johnson, talented freshman receiver from Baltimore, Maryland, on the field. 59 seconds. All three timeouts remain. Penn State needs a touchdown. Thompson in trouble. Knocked out of his hand. Ball comes loose. Michigan wins it. Michigan wins it. Matter now running out 53 seconds as linebacker Ian Gold comes through and punches the ball away from Kevin Thompson. Jimmy Herman dialed it. He brought the safety. Ian Gould is the guy who's been blitzing all game. This time the ball is on the ground. Larry Foote gets it. Watch this. The blitz comes from the outside. Finally, a five-man rush by Michigan coming from the outside. And Michigan now has 53 seconds. Penn State has all three timeouts. They should win the football game. Still alive in the chase for a Rose Bowl. The Michigan Wolverines. There's a quick timeout. Our Rose Bowl graphic again. Now Penn State can still get there, but Wisconsin must lose to Iowa. Wisconsin is in. Fizz holds. All they have to do is beat Iowa, and the Badgers will go back to Pasadena for the second year in a row. Meanwhile, Michigan... Who knows, now they join that battle for a BCS spot. There's the Fiesta Bowl. There's the Orange Bowl. Still on the table. Your Lloyd Carr, you get in the huddle and say, no penalties, no holding, hold on to the football. Let's force them to at least use all their timeouts. Ball possession and penalties stop the clock. Just hold on. Thomas, 11 more yards for Anthony Thomas. That'll do it. him around 127 yards for the day. Michigan will now take a knee. Penn State can't stop it enough. Michigan comes in and beats Penn State three years in a row. Tremendous finish by Tom Brady. The most underrated college quarterback in the country, Tom Brady. Well, a guy who had to fight for survival. You heard the sound bite. He not only had to fight to stay at Michigan, he had to fight off a phenom who has a baseball bonus contract and a lot of people expected to beat out Tom Brady. Brady was toughened by it and has made him a better quarterback. Jerry Sandusky's last game at home is an unhappy one. So our final score... 
Michigan, 31. Penn State, 27.